Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today I have an annual Valentine's date related video. I've done something for Valentine's Day every year I think um, but not in the typical sense. So I've done videos that have had a romantic undertone, I've been romantically inclined but also with the primary focus of it being sustainable because that's sort of the primary focus. I think last year I did a zero waste sex ed video so you can go and find that, I'll link that down below. My only video that is not monetized. <laughs> Anyway, for today's video I have 10 eco swaps for date night, for going on a date, a first date, regular dates, etc. 10 swaps that will make your date more sustainable. I started to relaunch this series a little bit because I've done videos like this in the past as well. But recently I did a video asked, do you want more eco swap videos that are sort of like a little bit quicker so you get a lot of tips very fast. So without further ado, here are 10 eco swaps that will make your date more sustainable. turned on my light. I don't know if that's... It, the weather is weird today because it's bright outside but the light isn't coming into my office. Yeah, we'll see what works the best. Anyway, the first date swap is a reusable coffee cup. So you can of course use this for other things than dating. But one of the more like common ways of going on a first date or maybe it's just in the beginning of a relationship etc. Or maybe you've been married 25 years and you still love doing this, everything's fine. But going out to a coffee house or getting a cup of coffee and taking a walk in a park, it's, first of all, that's a great zero waste date because it requires nothing and you get to enjoy the outsides and you get to have conversation, it's amazing. But coffee cups are disposable and they are not even recyclable because most coffee cups, even though they seem like they're made out of paper, actually have a thin film of plastic so the liquid is contained which means that they cannot break down in nature and they also cannot be recycled. Instead, many coffee places are actually perfectly fine with you bringing your own container. Some places even have discounts for people that do that. So bringing reusable coffee cups, they are also much more comfortable to carry for longer periods of time. Such a better swap. Bonus tip when it comes to coffee, you can also significantly decrease the impact of your cup of coffee by choosing a plant milk rather than dairy. Another fun fact, I don't know why I'm like this, but coffee actually has a pretty high carbon footprint, or at least it can have. So you can absolutely choose more sustainable fair trade brands of coffee. They usually have a lower carbon footprint than your standard cup of coffee. I have an entire impact analysis about the impact of coffee and how to make that industry more sustainable. One espresso has an average carbon footprint of approximately 0.28 kilograms, but if grown sustainably, that impact can be as little as 0.06 kilograms. A super easy zero waste hack if you're going to the movies, to a museum, etc., is getting the tickets on your phone as an e-ticket instead of printing it out. It is the tiniest small thing but it reduces waste and uh, it's a lot more handy as well. And this sort of leans towards one of my favorite points that I really cannot leave out. And it's when it comes to dates or giving gifts, showing affection and love, giving an experience rather than things is so powerful and also way more sustainable. Now, in terms of experiences, one of my favorite things to do also in a date related scenario is going outside in nature. And if you want to take it just a step further than a park, going on a hike is both sustainable, it's beautiful, you get to learn a little bit about each other, you get to know each other. And one thing that you can do that will make your hike more sustainable is making your own trail mix, generally making your own snacks rather than relying on takeout. Now there is a typical association with the word date or romance and how you show love and a very conventional way of doing so is by giving someone flowers. But flowers can actually have quite a significant carbon footprint. Many flowers, especially flowers for bouquets, are imported from great distances and that comes with a really significant transportation related carbon footprint. And a lot of flowers are also grown in greenhouses that rely on fossil fuels to keep going. And that really just scales up the carbon footprint of that bouquet. An analysis from Denmark showed that five imported roses have the same carbon footprint as an entire Christmas tree grown here. What you can do instead, give native flowers, flowers that are grown and that are in season, that is a 
brilliant first step. You can also buy a potted plant. Some of these do come with quite a significant carbon footprint as well. So the, the main thing here is to make sure that it's a native plant or that it's a plant that doesn't require a lot, etc. Anyway, there are better ways of going about it than buying a huge bouquet of flowers that are imported and grown in greenhouses. I don't want to be a big bummer, but roses especially. Now, I might be an old-fashioned romantic, but I love picnics. It's also an amazing way to get to know someone, and it's just nice to have a meal in a bit of an unfamiliar or uncommon setting. I love a good picnic, and it's a brilliant date idea. And to make it more sustainable, rely on reusable containers for all your food, reusable cutlery, reusable plates, reusable glasses. It also looks so much better overall if you're an aesthetic queen like me, but it also significantly reduces the impact of your date. Now there's absolutely no shame in skipping the date part altogether and going straight to bed. That's fine too. There are ways of making that sustainable as well. I'll always recommend using condoms, but some condoms are actually way more sustainable than others. Some condoms have some really nasty ingredients in them and also are really bad for the planet, but there are also really good alternatives out there. Brands that are out there going the extra mile, making sure that the ingredients they use are both great for you and also for the planet. This goes for condoms as well as dental dams. Another thing that's quite typical for dates is giving chocolate. But just as with coffee, not all chocolate is created equally. Some chocolate brands are really, really unsustainable. And furthermore, the supply chains of these chocolate brands are just rife with forced labor and child labor. It is possible to find good sustainable chocolate brands. I also have an impact video about chocolate, which also includes things to look for in more sustainable brands. You don't have to give chocolate. There are plenty of other types of sweets that are way more sustainable. You can also make something yourself, but if you're giving chocolate, just be cautious of the brands that you are supporting and look for something like fair trade. For instance, fair trade is not a perfect system by any means, by the way, but it is a step in the right direction and it doesn't guarantee that everything was perfect in the supply chain, but it does make it more likely that it was less shitty. Okay, that's just all I'm gonna say. No one can guarantee a slave-free supply chain in this day and age, but some people are trying more than others and that's the important part. Now, when it comes to gifts, there are certain types of things that I wouldn't recommend swaps for. There are just certain types of things that I would just recommend just leaving it out. Just the swap is nothing. There's not going to be anything. And that is, for instance, things like balloons. Sometimes if you want to be super cute, you're giving a bouquet, you're giving chocolate, you're giving a little card, there is a heart-shaped balloon or just like it's it's fun and it especially around Valentine's Day you can find heart shaped balloons basically anywhere. Balloons are shit for the environment, especially the ones filled with helium because they float away and they end up in our oceans and fish eat them and they are also made from plastic so that means that whenever they end up falling down again they end up in our environment and they do not break down. And the same thing goes for anything with glitter in it. Just anything with glitter in it. Stay away from it. You can be cute and romantic without the glitter. I know there are both biodegradable or bioplastic based glitters and balloons. I cannot guarantee that these things will break down in compost or will break down in the environment. So I generally don't recommend them. I have absolutely zero experience with bioplastic balloons. I do know there are some great plant-based or like bioplastics out there, they're just not very widely available. So I acknowledge their existence, but I don't think it's a great swap because not a lot of people can get their hands on them. The best thing to do when it comes to things like balloons, glitter, etc., is just leaving it out of your date or your message of love. Going to a restaurant is a pretty standard way of going on a date. And this can absolutely also be done sustainably by going to a restaurant with a lot of plant-based menu items and then picking one of those plant-based menu items. If you're not very experienced in choosing plant-based restaurants, you can use the app Happy Cow to find restaurants in your local area that have plant-based options, that are completely plant-based, that are vegetarian, etc. There are tons of options, but leaving meat out of your restaurant visit is a really great way to be more sustainable overall. It's just 
a really great swap. I'm not gonna sit here and say that a good date doesn't involve a piece of meat because we all know I'm lying. <sighs> Why am I here? I don't know what this 80s vibe is, but just, just, oh. Just go with it. The last thing on the list is when it comes to gifts. So one of the more common gifts I've seen, especially for Valentine's Day, is a stuffed plushie. And generally just things that involve a lot of plasticky, heart-shaped items. If you want to be super cute and earn a bunch of points, gather a gift that isn't pre-made to look like the most Valentine's-y thing in the whole world. Go to a thrift store, get some thrifted glasses, get a little bottle of wine or a little bottle of spirits and make a little basket where you guys can make your own cocktails. Use your imagination and figure out what the person you're giving a gift likes and then with vintage items or thrifted items or homemade items, make a little gift yourself. It takes a little bit longer but it's so much more personal and I guarantee that the person you're giving this to will be super, super thrilled. And it also coincidentally happens to be more sustainable. Anyway, those were my 10 swaps for date night, for going on dates, and 10 things that will make your date more sustainable. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. That would make my day. Leave a comment down below and let me know what your perfect sustainable date looks like. I would love to know. Me personally, it involves going to a plant-based restaurant. It involves either going to the theater or going to a museum and then ending the the night with a cocktail and a walk around the park. That is my ideal sustainable date. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.